Recently, I did a video talking about the percentage of food prices and how much they have risen. You guys have left me a ton of comments, not only just about the prices in your area, but how you are saving on food during this time. They are worth sharing, and that is what I am going to do today. We're going to talk about prices of food around the world and what you are doing to save money at the checkout. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Jennifer, and on this channel, I talk about saving money and living a simple life. If any of that interests you, make sure you click on that subscribe button. So this first comment is kind of the comment that started me thinking, I probably need to share this. This is very interesting information. It came from R.A. Trek. Italian sausage was the shocker for me the other day. Up $2.50 a package from $3.49 to $5.99. They went on sale and it was on sale for 50 cents higher than the previous regular price, $3.99. Coffee is also out of control. So Italian sausage, in that video, and I'll link it down below, it talked about how meat had gone up so much, and I think bacon had gone up 18%. So to see that Italian sausage, and I don't know, you know where this is, has gone up from you know, $3.50 to basically six bucks is a huge increase. Kathy Phillips says, grocery prices have gone up here in Canada, Canada too. I meal plan for the month, just like you taught us. Thank you. You're welcome, Kathy. If you don't know about my meal planning, I will link it down below. Definitely check it out. It will save you money. But she says, I find it really helps to think ahead a bit. For example, tonight I made a sushi bowl for dinner. I am vegan, so I, it is just veggies. I made extra rice, which I will make into rice pudding. When shredding up the carrots and slicing the cucumbers, I did extra. I cooked up extra edamame too. Those extra carrots, cucumber and edamame are ready to put in a salad tomorrow. If my budget is really struggling, I will eat more soup, homemade of course. I love all those tips. That just goes into this to talk about taking a, uh, one item and stretching it, you know, but you don't have to eat the exact same thing every single day. That's not what leftovers or meal planning is yes it can be you can make you know grilled chicken veggies and rice and eat that every single day or you could do like she did and make different things with the same ingredients the same thing as if you you know go to costco and i've talked about this getting a roast chicken and you eat roast chicken with green beans and and mashed potatoes and then the next night you make a chicken tortilla soup and maybe the next night you have a flatbed flatbread chicken pizza there are so many different varieties that you can you do with the same kind of base or ingredients Courtney Willingham says, we no longer buy pre-made anything like Oreo, pudding cups, gummies, granola bars. I weekly cook on Saturday and weekly bake on Sunday after church. I thought my family would be grumpy monkeys, but it has turned out to be a favorite now. I have found recipes on the internet, Pinterest, and YouTube, and they prefer them now uh, over the brand name stuff and with dairy and meat so expensive we no longer have Sunday suppers or huge roast even if it is uh, Easter that's coming up wish everyone an amazing week cup of tea to you thank you so much Courtney um, she's so sweet I love that she has taken the opportunity to not only save money by not buying the prepackaged stuff but to put better things in her family's bodies you know it probably took some adjustment front for them to get over the missing preservatives or the sugar that your body gets uh, addicted to, honestly. And it took some time, but they have learned to love the homemade stuff more. And there are so many creative people on Pinterest, on YouTube, that have hacks for all of this stuff to save you money. There are so many people you could watch on YouTube to help save money or give you ideas for food um, or, or any kind of frugal living or just being more creative to stretch that dollar more. I, I, it's one of the things I love about YouTube is because there's room for so many people and so many different people's opinions and different ideas that we might not know otherwise if we didn't have this platform. Megan Clockman says prices are definitely outrageous. Each of us needs to be strategic in a way that works for us. It's all about what works for you. Something I say, let's say if I give 10 pieces of advice, maybe one or two of those will work for you. We are all 
different and that is absolutely okay. If something I say does not resonate with you, leave it. If it does, fantastic, then you can move forward with that. But it's just like the way she says it, you, you have to figure out what works and be strategic about what does work for you. So she make meal plans weekly and will plan around sales along with what's on hand in her pantry freezer. freezer. <laughs> Every single video, I combine two words. I might start playing a game to see if, you know, you guys catch it and write it down below. <laughs> because it's it's legitimately becoming an every video thing. She sees what's on hand in her pantry, freezer, or fridge. Try it to, uh, and okay, tangent. I haven't gone on a lot of tangents lately, but a lot of times I do this to myself when I do something like that. I go, geez, Jen, <laughs> it's, just, it's just my phrase that I use for myself. Anyway, she says, try to do two leftover days a week along with one meatless option. Grilled cheese and tomato soup is the ultimate comfort food in cold weather. Yeah, that's a family favorite here as well, Megan. I love the idea for her though of talking about trying two leftover days a week and one meatless option. So that leaves four days during the week, well, five days that she's planning to, to cook or, or planning actual new meals. One of the meatless, the four um, are up in the air. The, the meatless one's probably a short list of the things that work, and then whatever's left over from those five meals is eaten on those leftover days. Um, it's just that meal planning, so it, it all depends on you. So if you've seen my meal plan, you see you've, um, meal planning video, you know I do it monthly. But what I, I wanna throw out an idea to you and see if this kinda catches. I am seeing more and more people talk about shopping the sales and planning around that. What do you guys like to see me try to do a uh, shop only by the sales and meal plan and eat that way and maybe um, film it and see how it goes? That is not how I work. If you again, if you see the, the meal planning video, I'm very strategic in how I how I plan everything. But with I, again, we have to be multiple, right? What I'm finding is that my life is busier um there's if you go to the store and you had something in mind that you plan to eat there are empty shelves there just may not be the ingredient you need to make that thing or it might not look good on the shelf so let's say you wanted a side of i don't know fresh green beans the fresh green beans might not look good so you have to adjust so I'm just thinking, would you guys be interested in that? If you would, let me know down below and then I'll try to just have to wrap my brain around doing like a weekly meal plan and shopping just by the sales, which Aldi is, I don't always shop at Aldi, so maybe I would just make it one of our, our local grocery stores and uh, that way it'd be more fun and unique. Just let me know down below. The next one I had to share, April Driggers. Let me tell you this one. She says, I was just talking to my sister about this last night. I live in Dallas, Fort Worth area in Texas. She lives in Boston. Uh, she said, bacon is over $10 a package there. She says, I thought $5.50 was bad. Guess I'll shut up, LOL. However, I am super annoyed at the deception in packaging. They are keeping the same size packaging but putting in less. So while you think you're getting a 16 ounce package of pasta, it's actually 12. Same for bacon. They raised the price and made it 12 ounce packages instead of 16. I'm just watching sales. One of our chains here, Tom Thumb, had a three pound packages on sale for $3.79 per pound. The other day, so I bought two, which was the limit. Hamburger meat in the store, including Walmart, is about $6 per pound. I buy uh, in 10 pound logs at Sam's for $3.99 a pound. I am impressed that bacon is only $5.50. Bacon here, I think, so in the Carolinas, I think it's like eight bucks. And side note, I just wanted the gas, I just paid attention. When I don't ever pay attention to gas prices unless I have to go get gas. And I started paying attention because I needed to get gas yesterday. And that's all I have to say. Yeah. The face tells you everything, right? But getting to April's point here, this is what I'm saying. I'm wondering, are you guys thinking the same? Like we might have to change our thinking, change our meal planning. <laughs> Maybe I can't meal plan monthly because again, of the shortages of um, 
the not good quality of the prices, I might have to go to shopping the sales and planning around that. So, I mean, got really loud there. <laughs> but what do you guys think? Again, let me know. I just feel like there's a shift coming and there's a way we need to pivot um, to outsmart the system or try to as best we can. Okay, Cynthia Myers gave us some great information here. She says, according to the USDA, eggs will keep in the fridge uh, five weeks in the fridge. So if you find them on sale, buy enough to last that long. Things we do to save. If I can make it from scratch, I do. I like to cook, so this might not be for everyone, but I make breads, cookies, rolls, etc. It saves a lot. Um, I am not, I can cook. Let me tell you, I can cook some really good food. Baking, I think because it's a science, not all that good at. Uh, <laughs> pretty much every time I try baking, it just doesn't turn out from scratch. It just doesn't. I don't have the baking thumb. Sorry. She adds on here, she eats beans. We love beans and rice. You know what, Cynthia? So do I. Bean burritos, bean soup, egg-based di dishes like frittata and quiche are really cheap. Yes, if you eat uh, eggs, eggs can stretch and make all kinds of fun things for not, not expensive at all. Also homemade pizza. Yeah, do not buy the frozen pizzas or going out for pizza nowadays is absolutely, but beans, like chickpeas, I use to make, I, I roast chickpeas to put on a salad. I make chickpea crab cakes, um, kidney beans. We make uh, kidney bean meatballs. We make, what else do we use kidney beans for? Obviously our chili. Black beans, we put on like a, a, a Spanish style pizza. We do uh, black bean tacos, um, peppers and onions over rice with black beans. We do nachos with black beans, peppers and onions and tomatoes, etc. There are so many things you can do with beans and beans are super expensive and it's a good protein. So if you are trying, you're not meatless and you're trying that meatless Monday or um, one meatless day a week, just do something with beans because they're super filling and you could do all kinds of like bean enchiladas. I had this um, recipe or I have this recipe for, uh, I think it's uh, pinto bean enchiladas. So you smush up the pinto beans and you roll it you take enchiladas, you make them just the same. Enchiladas, it's delicious. Okay, so Tanya Johnston says, I'm vegetarian, I use a lot of beans and lentils, etc. Um, you can buy them dry and easily soaked. Also rice, quinoa, rice noodles all go a long way. Making vegetarian chili, spaghetti, wraps, curry dishes, Buddha bowls are all great ways to make more and have leftovers, but also not too expensive. Yes, yeah, so with these kind of meals with like rices and beans and and the the vegetarian meals also they i think they save better and i think they heat up better i remember when i ate meat it just most of the time did not reheat well because you're you're, you're nuking it etc i mean i think you know you wanted to keep the juices in there that's what made it tasty whatever i can't think about it now but when you nuke it in the microwave it just takes that taste away and whereas you could get more, it could go a lot further, the, the rice and the beans and the, and the veggies. So the next one is from Green Pearl. I've seen lemons and avocados go up 25% in the last month. I live alone, so now I buy deli meat at the counter by the slice to avoid waste. So listen to what she does. She also prepares her own beans. She buys canned tomatoes and sauces when they're on sale. She doesn't have that much space, so, but she does freeze tons of chilies, meatballs, browned and seasoned ground beef to have on hand. Easy to just add in to the things you have. Another thing I found was a family pack of boneless, skinless chicken breasts, which I would butterfly and pound thin before freezing. Um, they take no time to thaw, and I love making bowls with rice and assorted veggies and sauces and spices. So that's great. She's taking all that meat where... Um, like a chicken breast where, you know, you would cook the chicken breast and eat the whole thing. Well, instead she cuts it in half and then she pounds it out even more. It takes it no time. So probably you could put, what was it, um, just like parchment or um, wax paper. I don't know which one between the, the fillets and then put them in the freezer. And then almost like a chicken cheesesteak, you could peel off the, um, the thinned out chicken chop it up, make a, a cheesesteak, make fajitas, as she said said here, you know, bowls, rice bowls. She also, um, I also have options on hand and find that I am eating less than I used to. I still splurge on good coffee at home and quality chocolate. Yes, let me tell you though, 
You do not have to splurge on quality chocolate if you have an Aldi near you. Yes, it's delicious. Just, I think it's, I don't, can't know what kind of chocolate. They have everything you can think of. We have this specific dark chocolate my daughter and I love. And a bar like this big is, I think, a dollar and 40 cents, which you can't go buy a candy bar this big for less than two bucks at the gas station. Okay, so Fernie4243 does something different. So let's look at this. She shops monthly, okay, with only a quick trip for milk and possibly some perishables. Yesterday's shopping trip to Aldi for a family of four for the month of February was $150. That's really good. I do have rice by the 20 and 25 pound back and beans and flour in my pantry already because I'm a scratch girl. She makes things from scratch. But that's it until the 15th when we pop into food line for milk, maybe a vegetarian, maybe vegetables, and a swing and swing by the meat counter to see if there's any meat that has been marked down, which they do closer to the sale by date. Still perfectly good to throw in the freezer for when you need it. So it sounds like, again, she she does something completely different. She shops monthly for all the bulk things that, that will last within that month. And then rather than, you know, going out at once a week or, or weekly, she'll go halfway through the month. For me, the problem would be we eat so many fruits and vegetables that we go through them or otherwise if we if we bought too many we wouldn't go through them within that time frame within the time frame of them going bad so that's the only way like if i were to try a bulk monthly uh, shop i could do that for the non-perishables or the things that don't go bad within that month but for something like i would still need to go weekly for fruits and vegetables for my family Okay, Waterfall P says, to save on the grocery bill, we are using less meat and more types of beans in our chili. Oh, yes. I don't even, obviously, don't use meat in my chili, but I use, I think, three cans of kidney beans, and I think one can of black beans, two cans of diced tomatoes, um, tomato sauce, ketchup, and something else, cayenne pepper, not cayenne pepper, chili pepper. It makes the most delicious chili it just does and it's full of it is full of beans so you can't eat it too many days in a row but you can freeze it for sure she says that um or, or waterfall piece says that we bought a whole chicken and shredded half for chicken and add to rice homemade chicken broth with coops with coops here i go again you want to put that one down carrots and soup i made coops <laughs> <laughs> with carrots for soup the other half shredded chicken for barbecue sandwiches and we cut our own fruit since the store pre-cut is too pricey yeah definitely she also waters down laundry and shampoo leftover meat rice egg coconut amino um, peas onions etc make great fried rice we try to see what we can buy come up with by using all the leftovers I enjoy your videos thank you so much I think it's fun to see what you can come up with for with using the leftovers. Like if you have two meals, um, um, two nights in a row, and you didn't have leftovers of each item, some people might just say, well, okay, so let's say you have a chicken, green beans, and rice, and you only had green beans left over. Some people might throw out the green beans if they didn't have enough rice or chicken, but keep the green beans because whoever knows what you're making the next night, green beans could go with whatever's left over from those leftovers, right? Okay, this one I thought was very interesting for meat eaters. Okay, listen. Debbie says that eggs will last quite a while. She read somewhere that meat should be used more like a condiment, like ketchup, mustard. I like the taste of meat in our meals, we, but we have, have tried to cut back the amount we eat. Yeah, I've talked about this, how they, there's just this thought that you need to have, so you've got your plate, and then you need to have this big hunk of meat over here, right, like you're a lion. No, you're not the lion. You're not gonna go hang out in the bed for a whole day and a half after you eat your meal, which is what lions do. They eat all that meat and then they don't have to eat or move for days. That's just what happens, right? Um, on the other side, you might have your, your other things, your carbs, your vegetables. No, limiting maybe to 25% of your plate is really, if you want to eat meat, really all you need, get that taste, get it, um, you know, get that fullness. Um, that and to save on 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 the grocery bill but like she talks about here using it more like a condiment i had never heard that and i just thought that was such a a great there's little nuggets of information that you can hear throughout your life that will remain in your brain and you will think about them so maybe this is one when you're going and you're at the meat counter or the meat section you think about this 
comment and it helps you to save money in the long run. Okay, Elizabeth Page wrote, a week ago I went to Costco to buy some ribeye steaks. All right, listen to this. I was craving a steak and a ribeye is my favorite. I was prepared to probably pay $50 for about four steaks, which I wrap up individually at home for future steak cravings. One steak will also feed me for two or three meals. Well, was I in for a shock? I could not find a package for under $65. And as much as I love ribeyes, I couldn't put the $65 package in my cart. Just couldn't do it. I've been there. There's so many times when you pick up something and you're just like, yeah, no, I just can't do it. Like you really, really want it. I'm, I'm talking anything, food or thing. And you see the price and you're like, no, it's just straight not worth it. Um, but she says that I could not find, I did end up getting a package of a cheaper cut beef for $35. And I figured that would have to do to save on uh, save money on other groceries. I buy staples at Walmart and I hit Trader Joe's and a few other grocery stores uh, on items I know have the best prices. A little bit more driving, but it's worth it. I also cook and eat the same meal for about four nights to save money. I try to stretch my $1 as, uh, as long as it is healthy and tasty. Yeah, I mean, you can get you could listen to some of these frugal tips and some of these um, saving on money things and it really is not enjoyable. There is a point when, like you don't wanna pay $65, but she still paid 35 because she still wanted to enjoy it. Yeah, you could go and eat beans and rice every day, but just beans and rice would make you go mad. And you're not enjoying life. There's a point when frugal can sometimes be taken too far. Um, it, it could be a means to an end, meaning it could be beans and rice or you're super strict on your budget because you don't you are trying to pay something off or save up for something and um or you've got to you know really tighten your budget because maybe one of you's lost their job but to do it just for the fact of never spending money isn't always the best thing for you okay falker consulting says the biggest ridiculous increase of meat is ground beef. So this is what this person says, $1 to $2 per pound. I can get two pounds of sirloin steak for less than one pound of grain, ground beef. Wow. Who says you must use one pound of meat per box dinner? You know those um, like hamburger helpers says one a pound of meat. FYI, when I, even before, like I didn't like meat in those things anyway. I made them without meat and it tastes just fine. Um, but it says use two boxes per pound of meat. So that's smart. So I guess if you're doing hamburger helper and it calls for a pound of meat, use two boxes of hamburger helper and a pound of meat. That will stretch it for sure. It says the meat in my freezer was purchased uh, on a buy one get one free sale. Break down a whole chicken, two breasts, two leg quarters, two wings, and if you cut the wings right, you can get very meaty pieces to stock up for game days where you won't miss the lack of breast meat on the breast pieces. So I thought that was an interesting one that I definitely had to add in. So tell me down below, I would love to hear more stories about what the prices are like near you, what you are doing uniquely for you to save money. Has your planning had to change? What changes have you had to put in place to still get the best cost on items? Put those down below. I would love to read them and I know others would as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you back for more videos.